This is 2017 Anaheim 1 by Jay in MX Simulator, and Jay is known for scaling his tracks at a one-to-one -one ratio. So the question we're asking today is, does one-to-one -one ratio in MX Simulator work? For those of you that don't quite understand this, essentially speaking, one-to-one -one scale is real life. Uh, anything that is one foot will also be one foot in the game, for example. Uh, in Jay's tracks, if we look at like a three foot single, for example, in the middle of a rhythm section, it is roughly speaking about three feet tall, which is what it's supposed to be in real life. However, if you look at the Race Factory Gaming Supercross tracks that race in the MX Simulator Pro Series, they are usually scaled at about a 1 to 1.2 to 1 to 1.25 scale. And if we look at this single in the middle of the rhythm section, which is supposed to, again, be three feet, we see that it is roughly about 3.6 uh, feet or a little over three and a half feet tall. And of course, the scaling between the jumps is a little bit longer as well. So if we just quickly do some math and see that three times 1.2 in scaling works out to about 3.6, 3.7. Uh, if they do 1.25, then we can see how the scaling varies. And that basically means that the tracks will be bigger in the Race Factor Gaming Supercross series versus a one-to-one -one scale that Jay, uh, that Jay in this 2017 Anaheim track is trying to put out. So the question that I wanted to kind of answer today or talk about is does one-to-one -one scaling work? And we're going to ride this track by Jay and talk about it a little bit. And the first thing that you'll notice just from riding it is that it looks very small compared to anything you've ever seen uh, in a mech simulator. Um, the, the turns feel really close together. The jumps feel for the most part a little bit smaller um and everything looks like it you know kind of fits a little bit tighter together uh and because of that because mx simulator is a tough game it's it's really hard to get right like it's really hard to you know flow the lines together uh not get thrown off or anything like that and uh it's a unique challenge no question about it but does it actually work for racing and competing as well as actually playing the game as well and as you can see so far like it's it's not impossible to play the game whatsoever uh, but it is definitely a challenge. It's not something that you can just pick up and immediately feel comfortable on. And another thing that Jay has to do to these tracks to kind of make it even more viable is because the MX Simulator traction model is a little bit grippier than probably real life, uh, he has to make it so the ground has a lot more roll resistance and friction so that you aren't rolling too fast uh, in each section and obviously carrying way too much speed. The 450s are uh, rather overpowered in this game, which is why Race Factory Gaming, when they make these tracks that, you know, we use for Supercross competition, have to upscale things a little bit so that it fits it a little bit better and so that there's actually more room to move around on the track and actually race against your uh, competitors. Otherwise, you'd just be always kind of like nose to tail and, and it'd be really hard to make a pass and it would be obviously more realistic and more fitting to an MX Simulator game, but it also takes away the fun value a little bit, which is why Race Factory has always kind of scaled up a little bit. Now, the history of this is the tracks used to actually be very close to one-to-one -one scale uh, back when we started racing competitively in MX Simulator in 2010. That At that time, uh, game creator Josh Vanderhoof was the one making the tracks, and his uh, way of combating the scaling was to minimize traction by a lot. Like, he would make it so there was very, very limited roll resistance and friction, and it was a lot more slidey. If you ever go play some old JLV Supercross tracks, which is anything from 2010 to 2013, the tracks were really, really slick, and the jumps were almost like ramps. Like, there wasn't very much roll to them at all. So uh, if you case the jump, it was very easy to crash on them. As you can see, Jay here with this 2017 build that he released a couple weeks ago has a lot more roll to the jumps and a lot more realistic look. And aside from the actual playability of the scaling, you have to give props to Jay here for how incredibly detailed and put together this track looks. He has also released a, I believe it was a 2018 Anaheim 1 track as well uh, in the past. And I believe we've also played that here on the channel and talked about the scaling issue back then. Um, but now as MX Simulator kind of, you know, goes downhill a little bit, it's, it's definitely kind of past its peak. It's one of those things where we can reflect and talk about what directions were the right moves and what directions were the wrong move with uh, the competitive nature and the way that people tried to build tracks in this game. So like I said, Race Factory, it's when it started and was using JLV Supercross tracks, it was closer to one-to-one -one scale, but it was still, I think it was like one to 1.07 or one to 1.1 about that time with his scaling. Um, and like I said, the traction was a lot slipperier to kind of negate that a little bit to make it a little bit more realistic and so you wouldn't over jump stuff but people still found ways to quad stuff that shouldn't be quadded or sometimes even five through sections and stuff like that it was really really 
you know, unrealistic to a degree. And so Race Factory, when they started building the tracks, the Race Factory Gaming Track Crew started building tracks in 2014 for the game. They started to upscale things a little bit. And I think initially it was 1 to 1.15 uh, was the scaling. So again, just doing that quick math, you know, like 3 times 1.15, you're looking at uh, somewhere in the area of about a 3 point, uh, you know, 3 foot, 3.4 foot jump essentially on a single and then things that were supposed to be like eight feet would be closer to nine feet and things like that um with that scaling and uh it it was it worked but everything was obviously really spread out and so they tried to like kind of condense it a little bit and, and make something that worked a little bit better and then of course the more recent transition that we've had to deal with in the game is the introduction of erode uh, which makes the jumps have ruts in them makes the corners have ruts in them and so on and so forth and again because of the idea of trying to create racing options and racing lines they had to expand the scaling just a little bit more as well to combat that because you would have just one massive line in every single corner like this corner is not very wide or very big for the way that mx simulator digs out ruts basically which is not um, if you've ever seen the erode system, it doesn't dig out ruts that are, are really, you know, tiny and condensed. It digs out really kind of like valley ruts almost. And uh, because of that, they had to expand the corners, they had to expand the jumps and everything like that to make it all fit. And because of that, it also lends to a little bit better racing because things are a little bit more wide open. Now, some people have said that they wish the scaling was cut back down to maybe that 1 to 1.1 factor, or maybe that the scaling was just brought all the way back down to realistic. But you can see, even like through this first corner, for example, how tight and narrow everything would be with trying to fit 20 or 22 riders on the track here at the same time. It would uh, definitely be a lot more challenging, and we may see the, the top players have a little bit more, um, you know, I guess like fun actually competing against each other in that regard with trying to uh, you know, squeeze into tighter gaps and stuff like that. But I, I feel that what would suffer is the players that are racing in amateur or just trying to pick up the game and trying to learn the tracks a little bit would feel that this is way too difficult of a challenge. And, you know, you could make an argument that it's an MX simulator. It should be challenging. It should be hard in that way. But also, you have to understand that the people that are still creating content for this game are trying to uh, kind of hit the mark on all levels and make something that's not only challenging but also fun that people can enjoy and it doesn't get them completely lost and never wanting to play the game. So while this is a cool case study, what Jay has done here with these tracks, it is why one-to-one -one scale was never fully brought about in a competitive nature in the game and uh, why, for the most part, you see these overscaled supercross tracks in MX Simulator. And that's not a, a issue with just Sim. Any game that has simulation aspects to it to a degree has always had to slightly overscale stuff to make a video game kind of work. Um, obviously, the arcade games way overscale this stuff. They make the rhythm sections and everything like that way bigger. Uh, I would say, honestly speaking, I think MX versus ATV Legends is one to two scaling in a lot of regards. Um, maybe some of the, the newer stuff is a little bit uh, more even keeled, but it's definitely quite big. And then the Supercross games, it's, it's yeah, overscaled. So... Again, just trying to kind of explain the history of it a little bit and why one-to-one -one scaling isn't used in the game. But uh, this is definitely a track that I would recommend if you've never tried one-to-one -one scaling before in MX Simulator, try this out because you'll realize very quickly how different it feels to any Supercross track that you've probably played recently in the game um, or maybe even ever in the game because it's been such a long time since we've you know, slowly progress through with the way that the scaling works and fits into the game. And you, like I said, you talk to a lot of the pro riders in this game and they're rather happy with the more expansive nature of the physics or the, of the track layouts these days. So um, interesting case study, no question about it. And cool of Jay as always to put the time in to make a track like this. Uh, this is the 2017 Anaheim one track, like I said, um, and he even has the pylons and all that stuff that show uh, who won that night, which of course was Ken Roxon. So cool little case study, unique to talk about and unique to discuss uh, where Sim started and where it has now come to as we move into 2023. If you guys have any questions or comments, please be sure to get involved in the comment section below. Happy to discuss further about the one-to-one -one scaling discussion in Sim. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video as always. Appreciate your time and we'll see you guys in the next one. So long for now.